Hello, welcome to Model Kit Stuff and this video is a first impressions videos of the Fire Flash. So I'm really excited about this because when I was a kid watching the reruns of Thunderbirds I really wanted to fly this. And I don't know why, um, because uh, it only ever starred in Thunderbirds twice and in both occasions it got into quite a bit of trouble. Um, but it was on the opening titles I seem to remember. Um, and it always looked really, really cool. I think this was, I know everyone likes Thunderbirds 2 and um, what have you, but I think this was the best looking uh, model that ever came out of the Thunderbirds series. Um, really, really gorgeous. Um, it's probably the best looking aeroplane ever designed, even though this one might not have flown in real life. But get this, it's got six six atomic engines which means this can stay in the air for six months um, it's got a top speed of max six which is approximately 4500 miles per hour um, and it's capable of flying at 250,000 feet it's equipped with two passenger decks and many luxury features including a cocktail lounge located within the glass selection of the wings wings glazed it's brilliant it's absolutely brilliant gotta love the fire flash let's have a look at the kit so this is a re-release of an ashima kit um, and its scale is 1350 um, the box is absolutely lovely um, this is part of a range of thunderbirds kits that have recently been re-released by adventures in plastic um, so you can get these from the um, Jerry Anderson um, website, uh, which is run by his son. Um, they have all of these in stock currently, along with um, various Space 1999 models and, and, and other uh, puppet shows um, as well. Um, you can get it from various other model shops as well. They're all around about the same price. Just be careful of shipping because that's where some people will will con you out of a, a couple of extra quid. Anyway, the box looks like an old TV. Um, absolutely glossy, looks lovely. Um, on this side, you get um, the same information as you've got on the front, really. Um, and then on this side here, it says age 14 plus. Has a little bit of information on there, and then on this side, some of that top secret information that I was telling you about a moment ago. Okay, box is nice and solid, so let's lift it off. Okay, we have sprues in various different bags. Um, let's take a closer look. Okay, so there's four of these sprues in two bags of two, uh, and each one of these sprues will build up one complete um, elevator car. So there's four of these included. I'm not quite sure why you get four. I think there was only three in the famous episode um, where they can't put the landing gear down, so... Um, they use the elevator cars and the fire flash comes in and, and, and has to land on it. Actually, they end up with some of these crashing off the runway. Um, quite dramatic. Um, anyway, we've got four of these. Um, you've got um, six wheels. You've got the actual flatbed there. Um, you've got the main body. A uh, couple of extra uh, details. And... Then you've got the um, pneumatic um, elevating arms, which will go on each side. So, um, yeah, quite nicely detailed, I guess. Um, I don't know how old the original kit is, if I'm honest. Um, but, yeah, that all looks quite nice under some paint. That will look quite stunning, actually. So there's four of those. All these other plastic sprues all came in the same bag together. So this is sprue A and basically has the two fuselage halves. Um, you can see here um, the length of it. So 
quite a decent size, even though it's a 1350 scale. Um, yeah, it's quite a nice um, size. Um, we've got windows here that need to be painted in or possibly drilled out. The plastic's relatively thick and feels quite hard, actually. Um, there is no sink that I can see in this. There are some indented lines which roughly correspond, I think, with the paint pattern of this. Actually, there's a little bit of sink right on the top here, ever so slightly. So when we put the two halves together, a little bit of fill and sand, but nothing major. Um, and what they've done is they've put them roughly in, in the colour, so you could build this together without painting it if you wished. Um, although it is actually a two-tone colour scheme in reality. Yeah, that looks nice. And the next sprue is D, um, and we've got um, more parts of the, the fuselage here. Um, we've got the air brakes, which is good. Um, and we've got parts for the um, really funky looking tail. I think these bits come together to build up the um, engine nacelles. So you've got three engines in each, which are there and there. So there is some inside detail in a couple of these. Uh, you've got recessed panel lines. Uh, though there isn't a lot of detail on the panel lines, I'm sh fairly sure it's probably um, just a copy of the original model. Uh, yeah, so um, that looks really nice. Okay, um, this is sprue B, um, and we've got lots of wheels there. There's no no detail on the cap on the caps at all. Um, still. Um, painted and given a bit of a wash, they look all right. Um, we've got more parts here building up for the wing sections, I think, which have the glazing to go in. They look quite cool, and then these have gone the end. Yeah, very nice. Um, again, no issues, it's all very crisp, there's no flash on any of this. Um, yeah, very nice indeed. And the last plastic parts are the clear parts and we've got the glazing here for the um, wings and the tail. Um, nicely recessed, it'll be easy to mask these. Um, they're relatively clear. Um, the, the wing transparency is being better than the tail. They put, they put the connection points on the glazing though which is a bit strange uh, we will be able to get rid of that but um, yeah it would have been easier if they'd been four pieces rather than two I think and done two halves but anyway um, and then we have a nice clear stand so you'll be able to show her in flight if you wish um, okay Right, next thing out, and I'm not going to take this out of its uh, polythene bag, is a display base. So <laughs> I've supplied you with relatively thin sheet of cardboard that looks like a section of runway. That means you can get your elevator cars out and you can have the thing displayed on the elevator cars. Um, you could have it on the display stand above the elevator cars. You could, uh, with a little bit of ingenuity and a bit of wire, you could have it um, just taking off maybe with the undercarriage down. Um, or um, you could have it, uh, again, mounted on a bit of wire, just hovering above the, the, the cars about to come and land on it. Very, very cool. Nice little addition um, putting that in. So, yeah, that's very nice. Next then we have the decals and the decal bag comes stuck to a Adventures in Plastic sticker. So let's have a look at these. So there's two sheets of 
uh, decals. So they feel relatively thick, I'll be honest. Um, and there is quite a bit of carrier film on some of these. Um, and you've got lots and lots of white lines there for um, marking up the the wings, the sides of the aircraft, the tail, all, we'll all have those. Um, there's some numbers, I'm not sure where the numbers go, I don't remember numbers on it. Um, and if you remember the, the um, aircraft itself, um, from certain angles it looked a bit like a, a rocket because it had this down the down the top of it and then there's some very small decals there so um, interestingly that says one and two and then these are a b c d and e and then these are also a b c d and e and numbered so that could be a little confusing so that's it for parts and decals, not a complex um, high uh, part count model at all, but still extraordinarily beautiful. Let's have a look at the instructions. So we have the model kit um, number there, which is 1006, tells you it's 1350 scale, got the Jerry Anderson uh, production um, Thunderbirds logo there, um, got a line drawing of the finished um, aircraft doesn't that look amazing uh, we've got um, paint shout outs paint color reference we recommend using the following humbrol paint colors so that's good because all those blues are going to be shouted out in um, humbrol colors so easy to get to and easy to cross match if you wish to um, so silver gold matte black matte white, gunmetal, matte scarlet, matte aircraft blue, matte pale yellow, matte oxford blue and matte insignia yellow. So those are your two blues. Um, you've got a how to apply decals instruction section um, and you will also need tools. Um, so it's recommending knife tweezers, sprue nippers um, and plastic cement. Um, and it's got a little symbol guide there, I nearly missed that, and it says glue there, that's a solid arrow, and no glue required is a dotted line arrow. Um, and then you've got contact details at the bottom. So it's not stapled together. And, oh, that's interesting. Ah, it's gatefold, that's why. Okay, gatefold. So, uh, parts list. So we've just worked through those. Um, so it tells you you should get four of those and one each of those, and then the two decal sheets. Then the first step is build the aeroplane, pretty, pretty much. Um, two fuselage halves, nose cone, um, the little wings at the front there uh, and then the main wing section at the back it says uh, repaint, repeat paint colours on opposite side so it is telling you there to um, some of the paint colours as we go then uh, in step two um, it says turbojet engine assembly so that's as we saw on those sprues so six engines mounted in each nacelle then step three mounts those on the wings um, and then wing tip assembly is step four just two halves put together but it's telling you where to put the decals at this stage as well then what was that step five yeah, step five is then building the, um, it says nacelle undercarriage assembly. 
So you've got three wheels mounted on each. The um, undercarriage is two halves. Um, and then you have those little sort of covers that go over them. So I, a bit of a difficult one because famously um, she doesn't have her undercarriage down in most of her scenes. Um, you only really have it for takeoff, but you can display it with the undercarriage down. It look nice sat on there. Um, but then you've got that stand. Uh, I don't know. Difficult one that. Then you've got the wing assembly, so it's showing you there the air brakes, which you famously see coming up as it's trying to slow down to get onto the elevator cars. Um, you've got the wing tips going in there. You've got the nose undercarriage at step seven. Then we and we have the clear parts going on in there as well. More decals called out as you go. That's a little bit difficult to see, I think. Um, then we've got step eight, which is the air brake assembly um, on the top side. Is it? I'm not sure because we've also got it there. Um, and it does show you you can insert it open or closed. Then we've got the tail top going on, the transparency there. Um, and in step 10, you've got the stand assembly. Then in 11, we move to the elevator cars. Um, and I, I did wonder, but I didn't say anything because I wasn't sure. But it says optional burst tyre. It looks like someone's taken a bite out of it, um, but uh, famously there was uh, it, it burst its tyres and it tilts onto one side and then skids off, and the aircraft nose crashes on the floor. There's sparks everywhere, so you could replicate that on that that little cardboard diorama base. <laughs> That's pretty cool as well. So yeah. Um, right, there's another decal sheet um, shout outs going on amongst this along with all the various different colours um, it looks like there's even decals to go around the edges of this well that, that's calling out the yellow paint so uh, it's quite a detail uh, in the where to put the paint which is nice and I think that is it yeah, so 12 steps in all. There you have it. So there you have it. Um, the um, AIP 1350 scale Thunderbirds Fire Flash. So what are my first impressions? Uh, what's not to like? Absolutely awesome. Um, the subject matter, um, 12 out of 10, uh, obviously. It's, it's stunning. Um, the actual kit itself, I'm pleasantly surprised. I thought we'd see more flash and, and moulding issues and, and bits and pieces like that. Um, but actually, it looks really crisp and clean. Um, the level of detail isn't massive, um, but you've got what you need. You've got options there for um, the undercarriage down or up. You've got options there for how you want to display it, either on a stand or on its, on its own wheels or on those um, elevator cars. Um, you've got so many options with this. Um, the little bit of cardboard at the base, glue that onto a, a picture frame. It would look, it would actually look quite good on a, on a club stand at a show. That would absolutely look good. Um, yeah, um, it's, it's um, a very pretty kit, I think. And I think it's been well thought out. It's not going to be difficult to build. Um, I'm sure there might be some challenges, especially with the, the, the glazed parts. Um, which, But other than that, absolutely stunning. Uh, and I'm looking forward to getting stuck into it, which might be sooner than we think. 
Take care, everybody. Thanks for looking in. Uh, hope to see you all soon. Um, stay safe.